Hi, this is Dan from Real Mac Software and welcome to this week's Developer Diary. Now, we're gonna look at the mobile navigation menu again. We looked at this last week, but there were some questions came up and also we've added some more options to it. So I wanna run through those things with you now. And following on from that, we'll answer a few questions from the forum. So uh, let's get into Elements. So I've got this basic site I've built here. Now it's kind of mimicking the Real Mac site because I'm gonna build the Real Mac site in Elements, obviously. And I've started to build out this menu and I think it's looking pretty nice. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, if I click the preview on, we can see I've now got this nice little menu here. And one of the things we've added is this uh, ability to add borders to menus. And this is something that came up as I was building this. Uh, I said to Ben, like, oh, I want the ability to just, you know, and I think it's quite a common thing that people are going to want to do to customize their menus, to have a stroke around the outside. We can obviously set the border and the, um, we can set the width of the menu. We can custom control it or set it to auto, etc. And you can set the curvedness of the menu. Uh, so I've got a XL curve on there, which is quite nice. So, I wanted this uh, little border around the edge, this single pixel border. And so Ben's added, added that in. Now, I don't know if you can see it on the video so well. I'll try and bring this down. Um, but this kind of little feature really enables, because I wanted this frosted glass kind of look. And by having this option, it really, um, by having this little one pixel blur there, it really, really helps. So yeah, so hopefully that comes across on the video, you can see that, but it's really nice down here and it really makes that frosted pane look. Uh, let's make this a little bit smaller. It really, you can really see that frosted pane look and it looks very nice. Uh, I like that a lot. Let's move that down and I'll move this up a little bit. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So that's one of the options we added. Uh, which is nice. And also we talked about having this drop zone here last week. So there's a drop zone at the bottom of the menu. And as I was using this, I kind of found, well, actually, maybe sometimes I want to put things at the top of the menu, uh, like another call to action or a banner, some text. And so we've added another drop zone there. I don't think I'm going to use it on this site, but it is very handy. So if I go over here, I can take a heading and I can just drop it straight in there. Uh, let's uh, we'll just call this menu here and we can change the font and we can change the size so you know uh, you could put anything up here you could any of these elements you know you could build a whole website in the menu if you wanted to all the layout options and whatnot uh, so so yes yeah, so and now that really gives you the flexibility to um, yeah, to, to put whatever you want in the menu. So, and you can switch these on and off very easily. And you can hide and show them on different breakpoints as well. So, you know, on mobile, you might want just the menu. And then when you come out to desktop, you might want to allow people to download the software and buy the software. And then you, and you can do that by setting these breakpoints that we've talked about before. So, all right, um, so that's those options. Let's hide this menu because we also added a drop zone to here as well. So <clears throat> instead of having the icon here, we, we've got a drop zone and we can put anything we like in there. Uh, and that can be buttons or text. So, uh, well, again, anything, an image, video, uh, but I'll just drop some text in. Um, and we can say menu again. And uh, I probably, let's make that white so we can see it. And menu, uh, change the font and let's make it smaller. So now uh, let's go over to preview. And now I've got this text here and when I click on it, the menu appears. And you know, this can be anything. This is just a drop zone and you can put whatever you want in there. So if you want, if you've got a graphic you wanna put in, um, a photo, any icons you want, buttons, whatever, you can pop it in there and then that becomes then that becomes your uh, menu item. But I prefer just having this, the little hamburger menu, so that's great. You can set the size of it as well, things like that. There's lots of uh, 
lots of options in here. Um, and we also have like this menu. I've pinned it and positioned it to the icon, but, uh, but you can pin the nav to the body. So that's the body of the window. So it'll always stick to that. And I've got this offset here. Uh, so if I set that to zero, you can see it's butted right up against the edge, 11 pixels, you know, but I could come in more with that if I wanted to. And so there we are. Now it's offset by 100, but let's set that back to 11 and pin it back to the nav. So that's cool. Um, so yeah, so it is really flexible. There's just so many options in here to really configure this and get the menu looking how you want. You know, I've got this nice curved rollover on this menu and I've set that all up to have a little um, transparent uh, color with some curved edges there. You know, you can make this straight, full width. You can even, um, you can, there's borders you can put between the lists. Um, so here, uh, let's, you know, I can, uh, ooh. Oh, where did that go? Uh, yeah, well, there we are. Um, yeah, I can change these to dashed and we can change the thickness and they're a little bit curved at the edge because my rollovers are curved. But if you want those straight, I would just take off the the curve. So yeah, so it's really, you know, you can spend a long time playing around with this and getting it looking just how you want. So one of the other questions we had in the forum, people were talking about they wanted a, uh, a sticky menu, but sticky on scroll. So we've added some options for that. And we were looking at this anyway to have a fixing and it was like, yeah, yeah, that's easy. We'll just do that. And then once you start getting into it, you think, ah, okay, well, there's actually a lot of options involved here and a lot of nuances that aren't obvious when you start looking at a problem. So let's go through those now uh, and you can see what we've come up with. So um, let's turn this off. So right now we've got the positioning of the menu on static and that means wherever you place it, that's where it's gonna stay and it's always there. Um, we have some other options. We've got fixed and sticky and I'll go through those. So fixed, fixed pops this out of the container and fixes it at the top of the screen always. That's where it sticks. So fixed, you can see as I scroll there, it's always, always at the top. Um, and that's, you know, that's where it's gonna be, um, which is fine. And then, um, so, even if I, uh, what was I thinking? Let's, even if, if I move this down the page, uh, let's, we'll drop it. Um, uh, it's fixed, yes. So like with static, uh, I've dropped this down the page and it's there, but even with fixed, it's always gonna appear at the top. But the third option is sticky. Now sticky, we'll keep it in, keep it there in place. And then um, when it goes to the top of the screen, it will pop out. So, and the text here says enabled in preview only not supported in the editor. And that's because we didn't want it sticking to the top here and then getting in the way while you're trying to edit your site. So if I hop over to preview, you can see our menus here. And when I get near to the top of the page, it pops out of the container and sticks at the top. So it's like a fixed sticky menu. But this gives us the option to place this, I could place this anywhere on the site. And as soon as it got to the top, it would pop out there. Now that's all great, but there are a few problems here. One, um, you might not want it to be full width because it's always gonna, it always has to pop out of the containers it's in to get to go to stick to the top. It's just the way it works. Um, but when we were looking at this, Ben implemented this and then I was like, oh, hang on a minute. That is not what I wanted. What I wanted, I want the menu to stay like this. And when it gets to the top, I want it to um, stay. I, I don't want it to jump out. So Ben was like, okay, we can do that because we have the theme studio. We have breakpoints preset up 
for all the um, for all the container widths. So we've got these all set up here. So what you can do is you can just switch the nav bar from full width to container. Now in full width, we always will just take up the thing it's put in, um, which is fine when you're on a static menu, but when you go to the sticky menu, it's going to pop out. But we've got this option here, container, and that will keep it contained. I hope this is making sense, but let me let me show you. So when I scroll up, it now, um, oh, it should, it's being a bit naughty there. There we are. So it will stay, I don't think the, the preview hadn't refreshed. I think that was the issue there. So it will stay, uh, it, you notice it just stays the width it is. It doesn't jump out which is excellent, which is what I wanted. Ben implemented that and I was like, oh, that's great. And then he's very used to this. And then I was like, well, that is cool, but I don't want it bunched up at the top of the screen. Like that's not, you know, I, I want it to stop there. So it's got some breathing room around it, you know, because um, it doesn't it doesn't look so great if it's like that. So um, he said, fine, yeah, what you need is some offset. So what we can do, uh, let's, uh, I'll set it to 30 and now, uh, now when I scroll down, you can see it stops just away from there. So, you know, we can put that to a hundred and if I scroll down, it stops right there, which is very cool. So 10, boom. So that's very nice. So you can kind of see how we were building this stuff and it's not until you start using this and um, implementing these things, you kind of find out these finer settings and these kind of little nuances that uh, we need. So, so yes, yeah, so I'm pretty confident this compact menu, this mobile menu will, uh, you should be able to build what you want with it because it's we've really tried to build in those options for you. So that's looking pretty good. So I can move that back up here. And that's nice. And so now I scroll down and it stays. That is great. Uh, but I'm actually I'm actually going to stick that back on static because that's uh, let's update that because that's that's how I like the site. Um, yeah, so those so that's what we support there. Sticky fixed static fixed and sticky. So hopefully that will cover your needs for the mobile menu. Uh, just before I finish up on these. So this menu here, we're calling this the compact menu because we didn't want to call it a mobile menu because we don't think that's fair really because I think a lot of desktop sites and a lot of users want to use this menu across the board. They don't want to, they don't want to change it. They like this and this is the menu they want for all the sites and you don't really need to limit it to mobile. This works for anything. So this is the compact menu and compact will always appear in a popover. And then Ben is currently working on the expanded menu, which is a more traditional menu that runs along the top with drop downs. Uh, so you'd have your main, so you can see uh, similar to the real Mac site now. So you have your main headings at the top and you can scroll between them. And the beautiful thing about the way Elements works and our breakpoint support is that you can choose, you can build these menus, you can have them in the site and you can hide and show them at different breakpoints. So if you want this compact menu on uh, mobile, on these two here, you can do that. And then when you come up to uh, larger sizes like the iPad and the desktop, you can switch to the expanded menu. Now, um, Ben's still working on the expanded menu. Hopefully, I'll show you that next week and we can kind of go into what that looks like and the options there. But that is shaping up really nicely as well. So yeah, so that's the menu um, or the compact menu. Hopefully that covers all the things you want to do. If you didn't watch last week's video, do go and watch that because then it, it shows you how flexible the menu is and how you can create dramatically different looking menus um, just from this one element. Okay, right, let's get on to answering some questions. So we'll go to the forum. Uh, now I only asked for questions yesterday, 21 hours ago, as it tells me. So we've got a few here, not too many, um, and I'll do my best to answer them. So. Uh, Rollis Size says, will everything you demo be included in Elements or will add-ons need to be purchased? For example, the grid functionality, is that built in or is it an add-on to be purchased? 
Well, uh, the good news is the stuff we're demoing here should all be built in. We think it's pretty essential that users can get elements and they can build a completely static website straight out of the box. You know, you want to be able to take this and build a site like the Real Mac site, lots of pages, sub menus, graphics, videos, you know, the works um, out of the box. We don't, this is what Rapid Weaver from the very beginning, from 20 years ago, this was the idea. You buy the app and you can build a website and you don't need any specialist knowledge. That has always been Rapid Weaver's MO. So um, Classic still does that and it uses themes, um, but what we've seen over the last 10 years, we've seen more and more online site builders come about and more desktop apps um, that allow you to WYSIWYG build things. And, and, you know, and that is clearly where Elements is. And that is what you currently have with, you kind of have it with Rapid Weaver Classic, um, Stacks, and then a framework. But that is, the problem is that is very, very complex to get into and very expensive. And this is what we're finding that it's a very, what was supposed to be an easy piece of software and rapidly that is, it's quite a high bar of entry if you want to start building these sites uh, because you need Rapid Weaver, which is probably $80. Then you need stacks, that's $60. Then you need a framework, which is $100. Um, and so, you know, you're already pushing on $250 here and people often buy more um, stacks and things. And before you know it, you know, you're at $300 plus dollars and this is just to build a website and we don't think that's you know that is very high price that and we don't think and it's very complex for users so elements is our way of um kind of building the future taking what we built with rapid weaver 20 years ago and bringing it bang up to date and and then some really kind of building for the future so these things, of course, they're going to be built in. Of course, you're going to be able to use a flex box, a grid, a section, all these things here, like a video, a gallery, that stuff's going to be built in because that is the basics of a website. Without that, you can't build a website. You know, if you're shipping an app that doesn't have this stuff built in, if you're shipping a website builder without this stuff built in, that's not a website builder. That's, you know, that's a shell of an app. You're going to need, you need this stuff to um, remain competitive with everything else out there. So this stuff will be built in. There will be third party elements, third party add-ons that you can buy to add extra functionality because there's no way we are going to be able to build every scenario, everything to cover all the bases, what you could ever dream of. That's just impossible. No web design app does that. You just it's too much unless you're hand coding it and then you can build what you want. There's the, the options are too numerous and there's too much stuff. So there will be third party add ons and there will be some um, advanced add ons from us as well. I'm sure in due course that cater to niche markets, things that don't really make sense to include in the main app. Um, OK, so I hope that answered that question. Feel free to reply or come back with another question and I'll answer it next week. So uh, Brian's got a couple of questions and these are um, tough questions. Uh, I don't have such good news about these ones. So his first question is, I'd be quite interested to hear anything about creating, publishing collections or content, i.e. blogs, audio, video, podcasts and feeds within a site made with elements. So for the beta, we are focusing on building static websites. We want to let users do that. We want to be able to build a complete static website out of the box, boom, that is the goal. We, so you won't be able to build, we won't have the tools built in to build a blog or um, feeds yet, but we have started working, and this was quite a while ago, we started working on uh, this little icon. You'll notice I never press this when I demo and this is our data editor and that is very very special I have not what we're doing with data I've not seen any other app do it and it's going to be really special the way it is tightly integrated into elements it's gonna um, I don't want to go too over the top but it will blow everything else away it is very special and we've already got it working to uh, a phenomenal 
standard and it really it's really really going to be powerful so it will let you do those kind of blogs those um collections of things it's very flexible going to be super stuff and it is really going to make elements stand out even more than it already does but that won't be part of the initial shipping beta that will come later we've got to nail the basics first but we've we've got it working as a proof of concept in the app and we know we can do it and it works just we don't want to spend the time on that we want to spend the time on this front end stuff and allowing you to build websites and get it out there and get you guys using it so you will be able to but that will come later um i think this is a bit of a follow-on question he also says i'm also curious as to how things such as bread crumbs and pagination work with collections in elements so I presume he's talking about these collections of items, blog posts and things like that rather than because we have a gallery, but the galleries, the galleries that are generated from folders and data um, sources, that is that uh, does not have any pagination at the moment. So it's all kind of well, uh, some of the views do, but there it's all single page. It's not over multiple pages. It's all um, a carousel or things like that. So, um, but I don't think you're referring to that. I think you're referring to blogs, essentially things like that. Um, of course, we'll make the data work, and and it'll we'll make it work with pagination, like if it needs it, uh, if you've got a lot of items. Um, but that further down the road. I think that answered your question. If it didn't, again, reply back and um, and I can reply here or uh, in next week's video if you want me to go into more detail or I got the wrong end of the stick there. But um, hopefully that answered it. Good. All right. Um, yeah, that's it for this week. I hope that's brought you up to speed in where we are. And next week, I'll probably be demoing the expanded menus and how that works at breakpoints, etc. So... Do let me know if you have any questions in the meantime and I hope you like where we're headed with elements because again I'm super excited about all this stuff because it is really shaping up and I really can't wait to ship it and get it into your hands. So all right thanks for watching this as always and I will see you next week. All right cheers bye.